Hello everyone, my name is Maria Mokta. After decades in politics, Dr. Mahade Muhammad looks like a desperate man still searching for a political base to accept him. Former Prime Minister Dr. Mahade Muhammad must be one of Malaysia's most prolific political party defectors or political frogs, Kataks. In 2016, he quit AMNO because he said that under the leadership of the then Prime Minister Najib Abdul Raza, the party appeared to be supporting corruption. Then, in 2020, he was removed from Persatu, which he co-founded with Mahidin Yassin in 2016. In February this year, he and 12 other members quit Pejuang, which he founded two years ago. He has since joined Pati Bumi Putra Pekasa Malaysia, or Putra, and for good measure, he has offered to be its advisor if they needed him. Mahadev said that joining Putra was in line with his political struggles, which he defined as uniting the people, the party, and the Malay organization. He claimed that Malay unity would solve all the problems and issues of religion and country. What about Malaysian unity? Don't the non-Malays matter in multicultural Malaysia? Will he support reform as the electorate wishes? Reform was once a word that he despised. Perhaps he will return to Maharism, which consolidates the affirmative action policies and draconian laws which affected millions of Malaysians during his first tenure as Prime Minister. It is 20 years since the hysterical scenes at the Amno Baru General Assembly when an emotional Mahade announced his resignation and tearful Amno Baru politicians pleaded with him to reconsider. Fast forward to today, and he looks like a desperate politician still looking for a political base to accept him. Why does Mahade not realize that he has overstayed his welcome in politics? He may have spearheaded the development of the country, but at what cost? Malaysians are still divided. He could have made the Malays independent. Instead, he gave them crutches and made them dependent on politicians and the state. Most have become more intolerant and religious extremism have not subsided. Without the checks and balances in our governance and administration, corruption, cronyism and the couldn't care less attitude in large sections of society, including the political class, have been allowed to fester. Mahade is never really happy with his successes. He is outraged that large swathes of prime land and businesses are owned by foreigners and he is furious that politicians refuse to listen to him. If only he would realize that he is a victim of his own policies. It has been five decades since Mahade swept Amno to power and many Malaysians still think that Malaysia's longest serving Prime Minister is as charismatic as before. Yes, it's true, he still attracts huge crowds both in and outside Malaysia but he is also as divisive as during the time he wielded power. Perhaps it is not respect and popularity which attracts the crowds, but perhaps it is curiosity about a 96-year-old man who refuses to give up. Among the rural Malays and the young, many still associate him with Proton and national landmarks like the Petronas Twin Towers and KLIA. And as the father of modern Malaysia, he dared to oppose the West, and he was not afraid to be controversial. His grand ideas and vision have enabled him to believe that Malaysia would attain developed nation status by 2020. The only problem was that Najib, whom he had groomed to take over um, the premiership, Najib had other ideas. Instead of ensuring Mahathir's 2020 high-income nation status, Najib moved the goalposts and charted a new milestone, Transformation National 50, or TN50, for the year 2050. So, does Mahade regret his alleged dismantling of the institutions of the state, 
removing the independence of the judiciary, destroying civil liberties, dumbing down the education system, and silencing students, and also stifling the freedom of the press? No, he has no regrets. In the early 1970s, after the 1969 race riots, Mahade was seen as the Malay saviour and the great hope of the nation. After reading his book, The Malay Dilemma, many Malays did acknowledge their shortcomings, but they failed to question the veracity of some of his conclusions. By empowering the Malays, Mahade gave them a sense of identity. He urged them to excel. He initially gave their children a sound education, he also provided good health care and business opportunities. Ironically, the Malays lost their competitive edge because they were beholden to Mahade and he did not care that the majority of his policies alienated the others, the non-Malays. In the early 1980s, Mahade's political masterstroke was to invite Anwar Ibrahim, the then charismatic student leader and president of Angkatan Belia, Islam Malaysia, or ABIM, to join UMNO. It was to counter the rising popularity of PAS. Ironically, it was Mahade's recalcitrance to make way for Anwar to become Prime Minister that contributed to his downfall in 2020. Thank you for listening. Speak to you soon. If you like my videos, please press like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please also visit my Patreon channel if you wish to sponsor me. Thank you.